Okay, I don't remember if I showed you how to do this or not, but uh, here goes anyway. It's kind of hard to get the camera way up there. So your jig is a little nicer than this and not quite as covered in crap. And, well, it's just glue. Slide your end bars in here. video. And again, none of this is rocket science, but I have uh, learned a thing or two about process that really speeds things up. One of them is, I start by grabbing 10 of these, I think this is 10 matter if it's 10 you can grab more. Uh, put the big end toward you. You can't really see that. But that's the big end. Hold them like this and you can just deal them like a deck of cards. Right out into your jig. I, I lay them down a little bit to start with so they don't fall over. Then they fall down the bottom then you have to start all over. So we get that. I felt something on that one. Get that all in here again. Lay them, lay them down a little bit. And the jig should hold ten. So if it's not full, there's not ten. If it's full and there's ten, you get it. Um, I find it way faster. And again, I'm not prepared for my video to use a glue pot rather than try to squeeze glue in there out of the out of the glue bottle you can do whatever you want you paid by the piece so whatever you want to do whatever you want to do will work but I'll show you get some glue in my glue pot I use this little this is one of those little uh, Disposable, reusable, disposable Ziploc Tupperware kind of things here. And I have very much glue in there. You can't see that, I'm not going to tip it. So here, I just put a little pressure on that, hold it with my hand. Okay, you can see that? And I just sort of keep dragging the glue up the, up the glue pot, sliding that pot along the bottom of the groove there. Oh, by the way, start with the bottoms. Start putting the bottoms on first. Start with the tops, you have to flip your jig at the end. Okay, so that's pretty good. And the rule is enough glue and not too much glue. A little drip at the end is good. You know your joints are full. Glue running absolutely everywhere is a total waste of money. get this you're not even seeing what I'm doing that's okay I'm doing exactly the same thing I was doing before moving that side it's hard to get the camera to show everything and yet show enough definition it's all right get some bottoms out and make sure you put the groove down put the groove up doesn't do you any good Wear it yourself later. That's a quality control problem too. <laughs> so I'm just getting these in here. I'm not getting too concerned about alignment. The bottoms are way slower, way uh, more fiddly than the tops. Once you got the bottoms done, you flip this over, you're nearly done because the tops are so easy. So I'm just pushing that in here and. This is the part that might make your hands sore. Oh, this glue? Don't get the glue on your clothes. If you get it on the clothes or anything else, wash it with water right away. If it sets, nothing will take it out because it's waterproof. And after it's set, it looks like brown snot. 
So, so a little too much running going on here, so I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. So it doesn't get away on me. I don't like it to get down onto my jig too much. Okay, so now, now that I've got the glue in my hands, but your gun is probably similar to this one. It's got that little little thing. You have to push that on your work to make it fire. The problem is, if you right-handed like me, I don't know. Um, you can't get right to the edge on the bottoms to glue it and push that down. So I need to do this left-handed. And this is where you'll have to figure out something else because I don't know if this takes a lot of hand strength, a lot of finger strength. I pull that in with my thumb and my forefinger to pull that joint tight. And then I push down on it with the gun just before I pull the trigger. And this is the part that makes my fingers sore. So you're going to have to, you can tap that with your mallet if you want. These are kind of kind of small, so don't wail on it too much. Try to get that joint tight. And take your fingers away before you pull that trigger. Because the number of times I've seen a staple come out the side of that frame, and the number of times that I've not moved my finger and got my finger hit by the stapler. It hurts and it bleeds. I don't want blood on the frames. Not too concerned about how you feel, but... <laughs> don't get blood on the frames. I'll move this over. So you can see this side. Might make a little more sense from this angle. If the joint is already tight, don't, you know, can't make it better than perfect, right? can hear over the heater. It's going to run a bit cold out today. There are times when that joint just does not want to go together. It's whatever it's glued. Okay. But the bottom's done. Yeah, I've got a bit too much running going on here. So. Uh, I usually wipe it at the end. Uh, well, actually, <laughs> I usually wipe it at this point, the bottoms of the frame at this point. Just because they're in there, it's easy to do. Um, flip your, you can see, flip your jig side to side. Don't flip it forward or back. Flip it forward or back, all the frames fall out. So I was sitting on the frames at the end and whatnot. Kind of rinse and repeat here. Again, it's pretty easy uh, doing the tops compared to the bottoms. And you can maybe see this glue process a little better with these. I don't know. If you see that or not. So once you really get rolling, you can. Like, don't get too artistic with the glue for crying out loud. Just uh, like I say, get enough and don't waste it. That's it. See it? Um, point of woodworking. End grain and side grain. Uh, I take a piece of wood here. You know, this is side side grain. This is, bad example, this is end grain, of course. End grain gives you very little strength when gluing. It's the side grain. Uh, you're getting glue on the end grain here anyway. So the side grain is the important part. And you'll be able to see end grain to side grain if you really look at it. Okay, it's more tops here, and these are nice because they, now you know this, they lock in, they, 
So just stick them in. Again, don't worry about the fact that they may or may not be pushed down all the way. If they're in there, they're in there. You'll see why. Don't waste time at this point. Just get them in there. Super easy, super fast compared to the bottoms. And this is why I tell you that. Is that frame were bigger. Anyway. Gather up nice and tight with your arm. Get your handy dandy mallet. You don't need to go crazy hitting them hard. Just tap them a good firm tap. You know, I tap the right and then I tap the left. I tap the right again because I've noticed sometimes when you tap one side that'll pop up a little. I have to reload my stapler. Hope your stapler is e easy to reload because you're going to be doing it a lot. Okay, bang bang, two staples in each top here. I find to go fast to locate this thing. It's it's you know you hang on them with your arm, but you know doing this with your hand is is a little squirrely. So I'll put a, a finger or two. So again, remember I was saying before that the, the end of this thing hold, falls over the end on the bottoms. Well, it doesn't on the tops because they've got the ear. It doesn't take much of a touch with that left hand to help locate. Done, done, done. Okay. Now again, I want to kind of wipe up some glue under the ears here. The problem I've had is at this point you wipe glue along the ear, along the sidebars, and then when you, you put them down for them to dry, you'll glue the sidebars together. So it's such a huge deal, but you know, sometimes you'll crack them a little bit, taking them apart. Grab them two or three at a time, look in here, you know, a little bit of glue. Remember that anything that dries is going to look like brown snot. So, most times this little bit of dripping is not going to affect these things performance wise, but they kind of look like crap if there's brown crap. Kind of dripping all over, right? I've got a I've got a big wood clamp here on my bench that I'm just hanging the frames on while they dry. I can do about 30 on that big 24-inch clamp, but you'll figure out something. 